Okay, so um, looking at John 5, starting at verse 16, going through to verse 30. Um, Jesus has just healed a man on the Sabbath, and he's told him to pick up his mat. And the, the question here, I mean, the focus of these verses, of this chapter, is, is who is Jesus, really? Um, it's not so much on the man and what happened to him, um, but it's it's kind of what gives Jesus the right to do this and um, what gives him the authority. Um, remember, John's gospel as a whole is pointing us to uh, is pointing us to faith in Christ that he can be trusted and to make more of our life about him for the life uh, in all its fullness and for life eternal. So, verse sixteen, we get a comment here. This is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus. This is the ESV because he was doing these things on on the Sabbath, and um, this is breaking the Sabbath, isn't it? We're supposed to rest on the Sabbath. You, you're getting someone to work, and you've done some work on the Sabbath. This is Jesus' answer, verse seventeen. He answers, "My Father," and this is a "my." It's not our Father. My Father. He's making a claim here. My Father is working until now, and I am working. So until now, this is this. This is a very specific um, statement about um, the fact that um, the NIV says to this very day, um, the, the whole point is that it's the Sabbath and my father is still at work. Like God doesn't rest. And this is what the Jewish um, Jewish rabbis commonly understood that God, even God does not rest on the Sabbath. Yes, in Genesis uh, was end of Genesis one into Genesis two, the first one, you get this, the Sabbath. God rests, but that's they understood that, that God is continually working on the Sabbath they observe, um, the, the sort of the seventh day, the seven day pattern, weekly pattern that, that God still works on that Sabbath. He sustains the world. Um, he still is at work in uh, in keeping the world running, and um, because it, if he if he stopped doing that the world would fall apart so my father is working until now and, and and so the claim is i am working too and there's going to be a big thing about father and son in this passage as you see i've highlighted the word father and i've highlighted the word son yellow for father green for son or um or the idea of son also um might need a bit of tweaking here but anyway the point is god always works even on the sabbath and so does jesus you know, he's making a specific claim so uh, this is where we get the explanation verse 18 is how he's understood the jews were seeking all the more to kill him they, they were really committed to, to try and kill him um, even more because and by the way this is the first time john's gospel i think refers to this idea to, that they wanted to kill him but um the reason is here he's not just breaking the sabbath but he, he is claiming God as his own father, his particular father, not just the general our father, but his particular father, and, and which makes himself equal with God. So they knew exactly what he was claiming here. He's making a direct claim Jesus, that I am I am God. Um, so we will say, well, Jesus never said he was God. Well, here we go. Okay, exactly uh, how he was understood is exactly fitting the claim that he did actually say that. Now, um, Jesus then unpacks more. And this is really deep stuff here. And um, I, I find it really exciting. So um, I don't think it's just me. I think I think we're supposed to be excited by this. It's, it's big, bold claims. So Jesus says, three truly, truly, I say to you, or um, I tell you the truth. I think it says very truly, I tell you in the NIV, I think is the way it puts it. But um, it's like, amen, amen. It's kind of like a double truly. It's kind of like, really, this is absolutely rock solid truth. Jesus says, um, the son himself can do nothing of his own, but only sees what his father is doing. So there's a real dependence on son to the father here. Um, he, he's not saying, now we need to think think about Trinity. Is this saying the son is lesser than the father? Well, not lesser in state, not lesser in being. He's still fully God. Making himself equal with God is still here. Yeah. But it is about it is about relationship. He depends on the Father in a relational way, um, and uh, so that's um, that's there. And uh, the Father loves the Son, so there's this relationship. This, again, this is all about relationship. We see Father and Son. The Father loves the Son, shows him all that he is himself is doing, and. Um, this is a bit like a father teaching his son his trade. It was common back then in the first century. You know, so, so take Joseph, um, the sort of stepfather, if you like, of Jesus. Wasn't actually his father, of course, um, born of the Holy Spirit. But Joseph was a carpenter. Jesus, we think, was a carpenter. And he would have watched his uh, stepdad, Joseph, doing carpentry and would have learned that trade, if that's indeed um, how we, we understand it was. Um so it's a bit like this. The divine father is showing the son, shows him everything he's doing so he, so he can do the same things. And greater works than these he will show him. The father's going to show even greater things so that we might be amazed. We might have faith. And, and, and what is that? Well, it's about raising the dead. The father raises the dead and gives them life. We can 
perhaps look at some Old Testament examples of that happening, like uh, through the ministry of Elijah and Elisha, for example. The father raised the dead and gives them life. Um, and, and, and we see later on, actually, that part of God's nature is to make things that are not living um, alive. So think back to creation. He just makes things live. Yeah, God makes things live, takes the dust, makes human beings in the at least that's the way the story's told i'm not saying that's scientifically how he did it but that's how the story's told makes dead things live and, and even we can't make dead things live i mean i can't i can i can i from myself obviously we've got the ability to reproduce and make children and but i'm not i can't make dead things live um yeah so the father can do that well so also the son can do that the son gives life to whom he will so his power to raise the dead give life things only god can do greater works resurrection really here and it's a spiritual resurrection as well. The father judges no one, but actually has given. So this is a sign of how he loves. This is all This is all ways of unpacking the love of the father for the son. The father loves the son. The father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the son. So he's got authority, authority to, to judge. Um, and the purpose of this is honouring, honouring the son uh, as they honour the father. So the father intends people to honour Jesus. But honouring brings the honouring of Jesus brings honour to the Father. So whoever does not honour the Son, so uh, the Father wants the Son to be honoured. But if you don't honour the Son, you you, you don't honour the Father. So this honouring of the Father, it's, it's a mutual thing. The Father wants the spotlight on the Son, saying, look how great my Son is. Uh, and ultimately you see it at the cross, don't we? Look how great my Son is, that he has died on that cross for sinners. And that brings glory to the Father. As we come to the Son, we honour the Father. Uh, we, sorry, we honour Jesus, the Son, as we come to him uh, through his sacrificial love on the cross and the resurrection that he's offering us in his own resurrection, we're honouring the Son. That brings honour to the Father. It's honouring the Father who sent him. So you can't actually honour God. Some people say, well, I, I believe in God and I, I, I worship God, but I don't worship Jesus. That that can't happen according to Jesus, verse 23. You, you can't honour the Father unless you honour the one he sent, his Son. And, and so you, you can't really honour God without being a follower of Jesus. So this is saying, I think, Jesus the Son is doing the same as God the Father. All kinds of implications are, are just unpatched there. Um, so so this, this is showing love. The Father loves the Son in the way that he wants the spotlight on the Son, honouring the Son, giving him this authority to raise the dead, to judge, uh, to do these great works. Um, let, let's see it again. True, another truly, truly. Um, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me. That again, it's very, very closely tied between the Son and the Father. The, the Father is the one who sent him, has eternal life. So, so it really matters. We've said this already in John. It really matters. It leads to life eternally, and um, it means avoiding judgment. He doesn't come into judgment, but has passed from death to, to life. So, this, the, without Jesus, we're 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 dead. We're, we're dead people walking, um, and. Um, we're spiritually dead, but we need to come to, uh, to to life. So it really matters. And again, another truly, truly, verse 25. An hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will will live. It's it's here already. So I think this is a spiritually dead thing. People who are spiritually dead are hearing and are coming to spiritual life. But um, but also, of course, we're at, this is kind of anticipating things like Lazarus, isn't it? And Lazarus come out. You hear the dead here and will live, but also the the grand resurrection at the very end, um, when all who have died um, physically will come back to life in some way uh, at the end of time. Um, let's unpack this more. For for as the Father, Jesus is unpacking for us. For as the Father has life in Himself, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. He's life in Himself, and I don't have life in myself. Um, I, I can't, as I say, I can't make dead things live. I don't think anyone else can, but the Father can. So he has granted the Son also. It's this granting, this giving of the Son also to have life in himself. He has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. He's repeating what he said already. Do not marvel for an hour is coming when all who are in tombs will hear his voice and come out again. So anticipation of um, later in the gospel and the end of all time. And those who have done good to the resurrection of life, so our response matters, those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Now, what does done evil mean? I, I um. I think I think good and evil, in one sense, it does mean a life. Is this salvation by works? Well, no, in that Jesus, the doing the doing of good in John's gospel, if you look at chapter 6, verse 29, is to believe in Jesus. That is the good thing to do, to believe in the Son. It goes back to here, honouring the Son, 
is the good thing. And um, but there is also, I think, in here a kind of the implication of living the changed life. You know, it's it's repentance and faith, isn't it? Believe and repent. That is doing a, a God honouring life as opposed to a God dishonouring life, doing evil. Um, so I think I think it's both. It's doing the good works of believing in Jesus. That is the ultimate salvation, isn't it? That's how we're saved by faith in Christ. But um, but it's also living the life that shows that we have faith in Christ. And then Jesus says this again. He, he, he is dependent on the Father. I do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just. I seek not my own will, but the one of him who sent me. It's his obedience of Jesus to the Father. This this relationship between the Father and the Son is really key to our salvation. I mean, I think um, I was saying this to some people earlier um, that that only the God of the Trinity, only the God that is um, relational within God, Father and Son, is what we've got here on display. Only the God of uh, that that is relational would save because uh, and and save in a way that is truly honouring and love. Imagine a God that was one, uh, dying to save us. Well, that God would be all about Himself. So honour me. Whereas the the Son goes to the cross. The son, the son dies on the cross. Jesus, the son dies on the cross to bring honor to the father, not himself. But the father sends the son to the cross to bring honor to the son, not himself. And so this this, this Trinitarian God, this plural plurality of God, God in three persons, is a God who loves us in a way that truly doesn't love himself. In, uh, in There's a love for God, but God has three persons. They're, they're seeking the love and the honor of the other, if you see what I mean. And so this is a truly... Um, this this is truly gospel, and it's out of that love for one another that we are saved. Um, and so, it's, the desire for love, the motivation for love of the other, is what leads to our salvation, leads to life um, for us, resurrection life. So, it's quite a big deal, really. The Trinity. Without the Trinity, we would not have salvation. I think, if if God was simply a lonely one being, one person, God. Um, yeah, so the relationships between the Father and the Son. This, this is why this is why it's come out. Is, is, does Jesus have authority? Yes, he's got the authority of the Father. He is the Son who has the ability to give life. So here we go. Jesus is God doing God's work of resurrection and judgment for God's honour. Uh, something like that. Trust and honour Jesus' message of resurrection from God. Um, uh, I haven't quite worked out how to get this across yet, but you could start with this idea. What gives Jesus the right to do his work on the Sabbath. He calls God Father, making the claim he's, he's God, who, who'd be so brazen and bold. Do you remember C.S. Lewis said, uh, mere Christianity, if Jesus Jesus claimed to be God, so he's either mad, bad, uh, or, that was a liar, or he really is who he says he is, which one will you choose? You could could work with that. It's not, it's not explicit here, but it's kind of in there, isn't it? Is he really God? Um, he, he can raise the dead. Uh, the, these kind of things. Uh, this this does chime in with Easter, doesn't it? Resurrection, re- resurrection. We just had Easter, so that's good. Um, here are some applications. Um, we want to honour Jesus. That's the whole point, isn't it? The purpose is to honour Jesus, uh, the one given our p- power to raise and judge us. Uh, trust in Jesus' message to truly come alive. You know that that's there, isn't it? Um, here, whoever believes my word and him who sent me has eternal life, passed from death to life. Rejoice that Jesus will raise us one day forever. What a wonderful thing. Uh, make Jesus the central figure of life more than anyone else. Um, he Give him honour. That's honouring the son. Um, yeah. Um, hearing his word, believing it. Um, doing what is good. Um, that's in there, isn't it? Um, marvel at the fact that our salvation depends on the rock solid love of the father for the son and the mutual honouring between the Father and the Son. Just wonderful, isn't it, that our salvation depends on, on this um, mutual honouring. Um, that, that's what I'm going to try and get the grown-ups to see anyway. And um, for the kids, for the children and youth, I mean, you might just want to you might just want to stop at verse 23. You might just want to focus on this section, 19 to 23, and just sort of link these things up between Father and Son. I think teaching kids that god is more than one person just do it um the, the, you know the sooner they get that idea into their heads because if kids grow up grow up thinking well god is just one per being one person then that, that gets harder to sort out later actually it's critical that we see god as he is father son and holy spirit and how do we understand that just god's a family just, call, just say god is a family of three who love each other look at how they love each other and honor each other and you, you could you could i would just put you could put three letters on a 
chart or on a screen or something and just say F, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, F, H, S, H, S, F, F, S. So we're focusing on the F and the S here, the Father and the Son. And look at what they, you know, there's a love between them. There's a giving of a role between them. There's an honouring. Um, they, they want, to, you could use medals as honour or something like that. They, they want to give honour to each other. Um, all this kind of, you, you sort of graphically show um, father and son kind of doing things for one another and out of that love comes our salvation and so we want to praise god who is father and son you know, holy spirit's not mentioned here but father and son at least because of the salvation they give they give us that that would that would be a good application trust and honor jesus message of resurrection from god yeah in the, perhaps 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 there needs to be something about the relationship between father and son here actually um yeah um yeah, I need to add in something about relationships between father and son. Put that in brackets. Um, so yeah, that needs to be in there, I think. Here's a Bible study. Uh, you could read the first three verses, which is scene setting really, isn't it? Um, verse 16, what was Jesus doing that led the Jewish leaders to persecute him? Uh, verse 17 what does jesus say about who is working on the sabbath what is he claiming for himself um, according to verse 18 why were the jewish leaders more determined to kill jesus um, very, very simple observation questions really and then go through these uh, verses in 19 to 23 and look at the relationship between the god the son and god the father between himself um yeah, I mean, the, the, one of the key things to get across is we, we, we believe in one God, three persons. We don't have three separate gods. That These gods are not like Greek gods that fought each other and disagreed. They're three united um, persons within the Trinity, um, united in love and purpose. Uh, what reveals the love of the Father for the, for the Son in, the, in these words? How do these words reveal that? If you're moving on to verse 24, what is Jesus offering people who hear and believe? Uh, what two actions does Jesus again tell us he's been given authority to do? What are the possible destinations for people? Um, it's judgment and eternal life, isn't there? Verse 30, what is Jesus saying about his dependence? What is his motivation? He wants to please God. Here's some application questions. What do we learn about the relationship between God the Father and the Son? Here, here are three sub, sub bits of that. How do they seek honour of each other? How does our salvation depend on the relationship between Father and Son? get that to highlight um how does honoring the honoring between father and son in saving us show god isn't selfish in his glory it, 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 he's, he's pointing the spotlight to uh, the father's pointing the spotlight the son the son is trying to spotlight the father um verse 23 what should we think or say when someone says uh, they worship god but they don't worship jesus how does that fit it doesn't does it how crucial is a person's response to jesus um, in what ways is there room for Jesus to be more central in your life than he already than he already is in, in honouring him? All, the, all these things here, I think I think we just want to marvel at God's love between father and son. That means we are loved and to not reject him. That's what the thing is that the Jews are trying to reject him because of this. But no, th this is this. The, the, the whole thing is that we need to embrace him. We need to believe in him. We need to hear his words and have uh, eternal life through doing that so let's pray lord jesus we thank you that you have come sent by your father who you obeyed and did everything your father showed you to do which is raising the dead giving life you've also been given judgment and so we need to come to you to honor god we need to come to you to have life eternal thank you that you do give us that life you have that unique authority to spiritually raise people and to physically raise people from the dead you've been given all that power and authority and lord help us to honor you jesus and in so doing bring honor to the father who sent you thank you that this love between you and your father means that you have saved us for all eternity without that love we would not have the cross we wouldn't have this empty tomb hope of resurrection for ourselves and lord we pray that you'd help us to um, listen to your word to believe it that we might have eternal life that we would do what is good and right and have resurrection and and turn away from evil and thus turn away from the judgment that you have authority to do. Help us to honour you, sent by the Father. Amen.